Hey, we're doing another one page website and this one uh, got a lot of people like going, whoa, what are you doing here? Because I said I was going to do a deaf website and everyone was like, why would you do a website to celebrate deaf? It's not. The theme is deaf. And I wanted to go for like a magazine, almost newspapery layout, but not be full on magazine newspapery. But the idea behind what I'm doing here is I've already built and I'm just going to go through how it looks at the moment. So it's not a full on site tutorial, but it's basically what were the components and what were the settings um, so that you can see how you can create some really cool layouts just by being a little bit imaginative with the widgets you use from, say, Elemental Pro or other page builders. But you don't have to go crazy with lots of fancy widgets or um, third party plugins. What we have over here is we have uh, some social sharing icons and a fake menu. We have a hero banner image. Notice how this hero banner image does not stretch the full width. You don't have to always go with full width. And this works, in my opinion, quite a bit better because it's almost like the white on the side of it hones you in to focus on the image, whereas sometimes hero banners stretch across and you're doing this a little bit to try and get in all the detail. And here we're getting the full scale impact of the Grim Reaper. Um, what we're going to have down here now is basically a bit of a magazine-y layout. By the way, it's all Laura Mipson words, so don't start telling me what you do. Look, you've got a couple of call to action buttons here. You can have a bit of text below. So the call to action doesn't even have to be on the hero banner. You can get away with it a little bit. Um, you might want to rejig it though at what point this occurs when you get to the mobile. You know, you might want this one to actually be the first column they see in a way after the hero banner, but you know, you, you can work that out. We, we have a call to action over here. Look at these. I'm using the call to action widget. We've got some text. We continue that. So can you see the magazine-y layout that we've got going on here? Again, text, we've got some images. We then have a bit of a breaker image, like an almost another hero banner. Here's where you could advertise some other services, a product, or anything you want, really. And then we get down here. And you can see it's very, I don't want to say symmetrical, but it's very consistent in how we're doing the layout. And it is really, really simple. Notice the color scheme on here. It's basically just black and white. And the only time we get any color, in fact, there isn't, and I was about to say there was some, but no, it's not. It's just black and white, you know, and a bit of gray going on there. And that is how simple it is. Let's just see how this was built. We have a container right at the top, and all this container does is contain two elements, social sharing icons over here and a text editor. This is a fake menu, by the way. That's how I created it. If we go to the container, it is set to be row. So the elements sit side by side, and it's also set to be spaced between, so they're pushed right up against the, the edge of how big I've made the container to sit quite nicely. This container is a width of 1,000 pixels. Everything is boxed width. We then go to the next container. Now, this hero banner image is actually a child container. If we go into here, okay, there is two containers in here. Sorry, not two containers. There's a parent container that parent container will always stretch the full width. That's the thing about the parent containers. When you create a, when you put an image in there, unless you've created the image to only be a thousand pixels, it will always stretch all the way across. So unless you go for a thousand pixels contain, it's going to go across. Okay. Instead, what I did is drop a child container inside. The child container is a thousand pixels. So now when I set the hero banner image in there to be a cover or whatever I do, basically it is a cover image, it now will not go beyond a thousand pixels. And that's how you can create the effect that I've gone for over here. I don't know why I've gone back here, but that's how you would do that. We also just have a header in here and the container here has about, I think it was 40 pixels top and bottom or something like that. No, not top and left just to position the text, big impactful text, just to get across Deathly Crows, what this is all about. Then we go down to this container here. This container is again set in row because everything sits side by side and we have justify content as space between. Why? Because inside of here, we have two call to actions. Look, I'll put it over here so you can see it better. We have two call to actions, call to action, call to action, and then we have another container. The two call to actions, um, if I click on, say, let me just click on this call to action. If I go to the width, it is currently 306.6. Um, why is it 306.6? Well, if I take 1,000 um, and I take away eight, uh, 80 because we've got 40 pixel uh, difference here and 40 pixel difference here. 
So we go from 1,000 to 920. Sorry, did I say 980? We go from 1,000 to 920. When you divide 920 by 3, because we've got three items, the width is 306.6. Now, I did use the space between, but I found it wasn't positioning it bang on. So I've just gone and added in some control width to how this would look. So all of these are 306.6. This call to action is basically just a image and then you just pop in your text. Pretty simple really. And this container over here is basically a container that contains, so it's a child container that contains two call to action buttons and a block of text. You can add whatever you want into it. Then we get below. Um, this is now a copy of what we had above. The only difference is that now we've just moved things around. So now I have two containers with text and whatevers. And they've also got borders as well. You can see the borders there going around them. Very light, you did, I didn't wanna to go too dark. And then again, I've got another call to action. Once you've done it once, you just copy and paste. You just move around just to make it work for you. When we get down to this container, this is a copy of what we had here. Literally a copy, you just copy, paste, change the image, change the text. This now has the text position starting at the bottom rather than the top. And again, 40 from the bottom and no, uh, yeah, 40 from the bottom and 40 from the right. When we get to this part, this is a copy of a previous container that we had above. And we now have a container, a child container with headline and text, a copy of the call to action. Remember, everything is 306.6. And also we then have another container and this time with a background color, a bit of text, and we've added in some, let me get rid of that some social sharing icons as well. I mean, it is so simple, but when I show this to you, it is effective, right? And when you look at that style, you're gonna look at it and go, you know what, for a magazine layout, I mean, what you gotta remember though, that these are not blog posts. However, you could have a blog archive page, which is using the post widget, right, or whatever, but maybe you've got some evergreen posts or something like that. You could technically build one of these out to always, always point to an evergreen post. Or maybe one of these over here always, always points to a shop, for instance. Um, so I've gone with a Deathly theme. You could go for whatever you want. And remember, look at the consistency in the images. There's no bright colors. This one does have a bit more of a bluey tinge to it. And there's a little bit of a red going on there. Very faint, you know, it's not, it's not all the way in your face. But the power of your images and how you make them look can be key to making your homepage, and by the way, this could be any page on the website, work. Now, what I did do is an alternate version of this. What if I kept the page exactly how it is right now, but I flipped the colors? So instead of having a white background, let's really reinforce the deftly crows it and go for a dark layout. Fine, this is now a copy of it, and you can see the impact you get. You're still getting the feel of the images, I've changed the color scheme a tiny bit to so where we had gray here, um, you know, um, so I've just, I've just modified it a little bit. And you now have a slightly different gray color feeding through here just to, um, I found that if you didn't, if you just had this as like, you know, a normal charcoal gray or whatever, it started to feel a little bit flat. So what I've done is kind of taken one of the colors you had in here and I've used it just to reinforce the call to action. And I think that works a whole lot better. And, and it, it just, it's very clean. You know, it's very, very clean. It's not pure black, by the way. I think this was like uh, 22222 or something like that. It's not pure black, but it, it can help. Very simple layouts to just kind of fit the theme of what you're going for. Hey, you'll have your, you'll have, you'll, you'll have the ones you like better, that one or that one. I don't know, it's up to you. But again, simple layouts without using too many widgets, just think about your containers. Are they side by side? Think about your width. Think about the spacing above and below. And you can make it look so damn good. Hey, I'm Imran Web Squadron. Hope you like, subscribe, share, and follow. I'll see you. Never break, always fight, never quit. Do it right, play the game, win it life. Have no shame, there's no time. Feel the pain, let the grind. I could change in my mind. Pick a lane, commit and climb. The only way to win it life. I never miss that fact. Taking big swings, bitch, hand me the back.